outside off a two-story house engulfed in flames. A German cuisine makes its grand opening in the heart of Santa Ana. The Eldon Santa Ana College baseball team gives a warm welcome to a former UCLA alumni. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Around and About Orange County News. I'm Jeanette Duran. And I am Elwin Melendez. Welcome to the show. A fire breaks loose in a Santa Ana home, and I was at the scene to bring you the details. It was on First and Forest, where 30 firefighters arrived on the scene, in which they found a boarded-up two-story home on fire. It appears about 9 o'clock, uh, we had a structure response to this house right here. This house is vacant and abandoned and boarded up. It uh, appears that a passerby has called it in. When the first units arrived on scene, uh, both the first floor and the second floor were fully involved with fire. This has been a place in the past where transients have lived. So we went inside, did a quick uh, cursory uh, search of the building, and there was no one in there. It took the firefighters a roughly 20 minutes to get the fire under control. The fire was put out and the house was secured. These are the remains of the structure. I was told that nobody was injured, but the structure remains hazardous. Reporting from Santa Ana for Around and About Orange County News, I'm Jeanette Duran. Although the cost of the fire remains unknown, officials believe it was due to transients. The family of a missing Laguna Hills woman is asking for the public's help to bring their daughter home. Erica Melissa Alonso was last seen on February 15 around 4 a.m., leaving a home in Irvine after arguing with her on and off boyfriend. She was driving a white 2014 Honda Civic with the license plate number 74SS563. Anyone with information regarding Alonso's whereabouts is asked to call the Orange County Sheriff's Department at 714-647-7042. An abundant amount of sea lions have been showing up along the coast. AAOC's Adan Servin had the details. Sea lion rescues continue to spike at the Pacific Marine Mammal Center in Laguna Beach. Just this past January, about 250 sea lions have been reported stranded along Orange County beaches. Most of these sea lions are brought back either sick or malnourished. Keith Matassa, executive director of PMMC, tells us one of the theories why this is happening. Um, one of the leading theories is that the forage or the prey that the sea lions eat has moved and it's moved further away from uh, the rookeries. So now moms that are um, mother sea lions that are nursing their pups have to swim two to three times further for the fish, um, dive deeper for the fish so they're expending more energy and then they have to get back to the pups and they're going back to the pups um, less fat, so less less nutrients. The other theories that, that um, add to that is that we have an El Nino this year. It's a mild El Nino, but it's still causing climate change or uh, environmental change in temperatures of water, winds, um, currents, and those things, and that's pushing the fish even further offshore. Whatever the case may be, marine biologists speculate that the weather might be the cause for the shortage of food that's bringing the sea lions ashore. Aw, these sea lions are so cute. With so many stranded sea lions appearing in Orange County, PMMC is the safe place where they can get rehabilitated so that one day they could get back to the ocean. In Laguna Beach, Alan Servine, around and about Orange County News. If you would like to know more about this, visit the website pacificmmc.org. A man in his 50s was struck and killed by two vehicles Monday morning in Santa Ana. The unidentified man was attempting to cross McFadden Avenue when a driver in a car struck him. Authorities said a driver in a pickup truck then struck him again in the street where he died shortly after. Both drivers stayed at the scene and cooperated with investigators. The Nixon Library held an event honoring U.S. President Jeff Sparks has a story. On President's Day, we reflect on the Office of the Presidency and the 43 former U.S. Presidents. Honoring them 
and reflecting on their lives. The 37th chief executive was Richard Milhouse Nixon. He was born, raised, and even laid to rest in Orange County, specifically Yorba Linda, and especially right here on these grounds. Using the occasion of President's Day, the Richard Nixon Foundation opens up the Nine Acre Campus to tour for free and thousands partake. For a quarter of a century, the Richard Nixon Presidential Library and Museum has welcomed millions of visitors from around the globe. The museum visit begins in the spacious Annenberg Court with a wall display of every Time magazine that featured Nixon on the cover, a whopping 55 times, more than any other person. Yeah, this is a really special place. You know, it is one of 13 presidential libraries here in the United States. And um, we have the home here where Richard Nixon was born more than 100 years ago. 50 feet away um, are the resting places of both the president and Mrs. Nixon. Um, the helicopter that he and three other presidents use is here on site, Marine One helicopter. And uh, for researchers and historians, we have over 40 million documents, um, hundreds of thousands of photos um, that are here and available for researchers. The only Orange County resident to become chief executive, Nixon left us 21 years ago, also leaving us with a place to ponder all things Richard Nixon. Visual media, namely television, has a substantial effect on the public's perception of Richard Nixon. The president, what does it mean to me? It means honoring the leaders of our nation, starting with Mr. Washington, who founded the republic, Mr. Jefferson, who expanded it, and Mr. Lincoln, who saved it. What does President's Day mean to me? I think it's uh, just an awareness of getting back to patriotism, which we have a lack of these days. And I think it's just to remind people, let's get back to that. And like I said before, like uh, back to character, honesty, integrity, doing the right thing. Simple, easy, you just do it. The idea of if I were president, what would I say? As Thomas Jefferson, I believed a certain amount. As Dale Reynolds, I believe even more. Democracy is the best form of government, except for everything else, as Winston Churchill said. I'm glad we have one day for the presidents, all of them. Thousands of us spent President's Day becoming educated and entertained with the likes of Presidents Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, and Teddy Roosevelt. Reporting for Roundabout Orange County News in your Belinda at the Nixon Library, I'm Jeff Sparks. The Founding Fathers approve of our modern celebration. Drastic safety measures are underway by the, Rancho, by the Rancho Santiago Community College District. Both Santa Ana and Santiago Canyon Colleges will be implementing armed security guards on campus as the first public colleges and universities. This new policy was unanimously approved by district trustees earlier this month. Their spokeswoman, Judy Lancone, said that there will be 16 armed guards and managers within the next year to 18 months. Join our reporter, Jeanette Duran, as she takes part in Santa Ana College Centennial celebration. Today marks the 100th anniversary for Santa Ana College, where they will be celebrating the past and their boundless future. Santa Ana College has come a long way from its first fall morning in 1915 when the junior college opened its doors on the grounds of Santa Ana High School. Although it's hard to believe with over 65 acres and 30,000 students each semester that the school at its opening day only held 24 students and 11 professors. Today, community leaders, established alumni, and the many people that continue to make Santa Ana College an educational base welcome, serve, and celebrate the past and boundless future. It's overwhelming. I mean, I had no idea that um, I would be here for the hundreds. I mean, I came in the 90th, and you know, here I am 10 years later, so it's really exciting. And they commemorate this 100-year milestone with a time capsule burial. The capsule holds an iPod Touch with interviews, a copy of the college's master plan, patches and medals won by students, <laughs> copies from the L. Don student newspaper, and some items that were in the earlier time capsule. 
Throughout the year, Santa Ana College will hold other events to celebrate the past of the many students and staff that have roamed its campus grounds, and to the upcoming students that will get to enjoy the new buildings, programs, and scholarships that the school is very soon to establish. Reporting for Around and About Orange County News, I'm Jeanette Duran. We will keep you updated on upcoming events that the college will hold to continue the celebration. By observing how other companies have failed, Orange County has learned how to promote what it's essentially a toilet to tap water treatment system. North and Central Orange County res residents are already drinking crystal clear water with 70 gallons pumped underground every day as part of the groundwater replenishment system. Double the amount of injected underground thanks to a $143 million expansion. Now we'll pass it over to Claudia Buscio, who will give us all the latest news going in the world of entertainment. Thanks, Edwin. I'm Claudia Buccio, and Happy New Year! Welcome to the year of the goat, sheep, or ram, depending on where you're from. 1,500 spectators attended the firecracker celebration at the Asian Garden Mall in Westminster on February 19th. Lunar New Year is the first day of secular, sacred, or other year whose months are coordinated by the cycles of the moon. It is celebrated by Korean, Tibetan, Mongolian, Vietnamese, and Chinese cultures around the world, with banging and popping of controlled explosions which are set to scare off bad luck for the upcoming year. Carlos Callejo in Santa Ana College shared his works of art with the students. Our very own Jeff Sparks paints us a picture of the event. About 100 people gathered for the opening of his art show at Santa Ana College. From paper to wall, the murals of Carlos Callejo. He's on exhibit now through April 2nd, open to the public for free. Callejo, an artist, educator, and activist, has played a major role in over 40 mural projects nationally and internationally. From paper to wall demonstrates how the mural process unfolds from idea and concept to proposal, design, production, and the numerous people involved in this form of public art. During the six-week exhibit, Callejo will be working and creating a new mural in the art gallery with assistance of students. The new mural will be then gifted to the college. I'm trying to bring in art shows that show students how things are done, the behind the scenes techniques and whatnot. And so that's really important for me to show the students how things are done. And it's not just some magical piece that's just all of a sudden appearing on a wall. His artistic endeavors have focused on individual histories with images of cultural traditions, aspirations, celebrations, and community challenges. The final artistic result reflects the dignity of that particular community. He combines cultural sensitivity, audience, academic knowledge, and practical training to create his distinguished works. There's a difference between my what I call my studio work and my public artwork. Uh, my studio work is more my own interpretation of the idea or the subject matter, but whereas the public art, there's a certain responsibility that goes for that because it's not your interpretation. You have to be like the voice of the particular community that you're, whether you're doing, that either you're doing the mural, your installation, installing a mural, and so it has to speak, it has to be their voice. So I'm only a tool for their inspirations, their celebrations, their struggles, their cultural traditions. So I try to be as, as sensitive to that as possible. A long-standing advocate of public art, Callejo has dedicated much of his career to the creation of murals in the barrios throughout the United States and abroad. From paper to wall, the murals of Carlos Callejo. Reporting for Around and About Orange County News, I'm Jeff Sparks from Santa Ana College. If you are interested, the murals will remain on exhibit until April 2nd. Hollywood's most anticipated night, Star Studded Night, finally came to place in the 87th Academy Awards ceremony. It was a celebration full of surprises and humor with Neil Patrick Harris as this year's host. Birdman won Best Picture, Best Cinematography, Original Screenplay, and Best Director in the hands of Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu. Eddie Redmayne, who starred in The Theory of Everything, won the category of Best Actor, and Julianne Moore won Best Actress for her role in Still Alice. Looking for a new place to eat? You're in luck. 
a new restaurant has opened up in downtown Santa Ana. Our reporter Alex Lopez has a scoop. Downtown Santa Ana has gotten a whole lot tastier with the opening of Worst House. The restaurant offers a delicious assortment of sausages, Belgian fries, and a great selection of Belgian and German beer. Walking in, you are greeted by the smell of deliciousness as the sausages are sizzled on the grill. There are many different types of sausages you can order, like Frankfurter, Polish Kielbasa, Portuguese Hawaiian, and smoked cheddar. Well, just to name a few. I caught up with the owners of Worst Haas to find out how this late night establishment came to be. Old. We met in Corona. We both uh, worked in restaurants uh, half of our lives. And uh, about a year ago, a junior over here was like, hey man, remember that dream we had about opening up a bar, opening up a restaurant, are we gonna do it or not? And so we got together and we said, well, let's, let's do it. Let's pull the trigger and do something. And he pushed us to, to just, just do it, crack that seal and go for it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's the hardest part in any venture is just saying, hey, you know what, put one foot forward and say, let's do it. Of course, a visit to Worst Haas would not be complete without making a trip to the bar. I wanted to know, what beer was the pride of the Haas? The Vitus, the Weihenstaufener Vitus beer. It's uh, the oldest beer that's brewed in the world. Um, I believe it was first brewed in AD 1050 or something like that. And a lot of people like the fact that it's, a, it's kind of a historical monument of, of sorts, I guess you could say. Um, they go for that um, for that reason. It's got a good uh, percentage alcohol-wise. A lot of people, uh, they tend to go for the more higher alcohol percentages just because they want to they uh, get more bang for the buck, I guess you could say. <laughs> Worst Haas is open Sunday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 2 a.m., and Thursday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. So look what I got. If you want your own, come down to 4th and French and check it out. Reporting for Roundabout Orange County News, I'm Alex Lopez. Thank you, Alex, for that tasty report. Now I know what I'll be having for lunch today. Although I have so much more on entertainment I could share with you, I'm going to pass it back to the anchors at the news desk. Thanks. Thank you, Claudia. Thousands of customers in Buena Park lost power Sunday night during the sudden rainstorm that passed by. The rain continued to affect hundreds mon Monday morning. Southern California Edison officials noted that 2,240 customers lost power around 10 o'clock Sunday night. Officials suspect rain caused damage to equipment, which caused the outage. 452 customers remained without power Monday morning. In the search of a culinary art and local entrepreneurship, our reporter Claudia Buccio takes us on a delicious adventure at the pre-opening of the Forestry Market. The Fourth Street Market is finally here to stay. From 5 to 10 p.m., Saver Santa Ana introduced the market to the locals on its pre-opening event with music and a great variety of delicacies. People were able to enjoy downtown Santa Ana's culinary through a $10 ticket valid for five tastings at the different participating restaurants. This amazing project cost several millions of dollars, but it was definitely worth the wait. Santa Ana now has a lot more to offer in terms of uh, diversity of foods and, and uh, culture, and this type of event really promotes it in the way that it should be. Approximately 50% of the restaurants are owned by so-called Santaneros, which creates a bond between culture and economics. The official grand opening was February 16th, but many people all over Orange County could not wait until then. So they came down to 4th Street to discover the gastronomical creations of these local businesses. It will be open on a daily basis from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. The market came about when Ryan Chase, who owns a lot of property over in this area, uh, he traveled the country to look at things that would help reinvigorate Santa Ana. And he found that food halls and, uh, and food was really bringing to people together in communities. Um, it was creating an exciting, dynamic you know, shopping districts and areas. And so he took little pieces of all the different things he saw uh, in New York, Portland, different cities, and created his own model here. The 4th Street Market brought family and friends together in a way that only great food can provide. Long lines in crowded areas were no problem due to the innovative atmosphere that the market creates. 
With no doubt, the Forest Street Market is a great opportunity for our local businesses and residents to enjoy what the city of Santa Ana has to offer. I'm Claudia Buccio reporting from Santa Ana for Around and About Orange County News. If you'd like to know more about the different restaurants or just to check it out, you can visit their website, forestreetmarket.com. The happiest place on earth just got more expensive. Disneyland ticket prices have increased yet again in less than a year. The price hike varies between types of tickets and annual passes. A one-day one-park ticket increased from $96 to $99 and a one-day one-park child ticket ages 3 to 9 increased from $90 to $93. The price increase was part of the across-the-board raise in cost for attendees at Anaheim's Disneyland Resort and Walt Disney World in Florida. Baseball, soccer, and all sports, Jeff Sparks gives the latest on sports news. Hello, I'm Jeff Sparks, and today I'll be telling you all about the latest sports news. Santa Ana College's baseball team has an inspirational element in its team. Our reporter, Claudia Buccio, has the details. From touchdowns to home runs, Alex demonstrates that the strikes of life only make a true athlete undefeatable. Former UCLA football defensive back Alex Mascarinas had to change his plans after suffering multiple concussions. Maybe football was over for this 24-year-old, but the bats and gloves from Santa Ana College gave him a second chance in sports. Knowing that it's going to be your last time ever playing, um, kind of just had to keep pushing and I meant it took a while for me to get over it but finally getting out here kind of helped. Nothing's ever set in stone. Uh, there's always something out there for you. Just you have to find it uh, and just always keep working hard and keep working hard and things will go on your way. As the saying goes, practice makes perfection. Alex takes all this preparation seriously and continuously inspires his peers through his driven passion and focus. Alex has gained respect as a team's dad due to his experience in both football during college and baseball as his first sport in high school. Plus, he is the oldest member of the team. First thing we saw was a great athlete, um, you know, good body, um, extremely fast and, uh, and smart, very, very uh, intelligent young man. Um, but it's all the stuff that you don't see on the field that Alex contributes to a baseball team. Uh, it's, his, it's his intelligence, it's his natural born leadership, it's his hustle, uh, and it's his worth, work ethic that really allow him to get his players and his team to buy into um, to how much time you have to put into baseball to get to where you want to be. The next step for Alex is to help the team win the conference championship and the state level competition Academically, he wants to pursue a master's degree, probably in sports psychology, at a good NAIA school for a couple more baseball seasons. A great lesson is taught. It is never too late to fight for a dream. Reporting from Santa Ana for Around and About Orange County News, I'm Claudia Buccio. Determination and dedication have led Alex to become a successful baseball player and a role model for many. Angel left fielder Josh Hamilton will be out longer than expected due to a right shoulder injury. The initial prognosis was that Hamilton would be out for six to eight weeks after surgery. Now the new timeline could be as much as 12 weeks. Hamilton will miss most, if not all, of spring training. The 33-year-old is expected to return sometime in May. Newport Fit for Life gives us the keys to health and fitness. I went to check out the latest information. Personal trainers are abundant in Southern California, but I wanted to get the real story about exercise and diet from a gym in Orange County, from someone with the brains and brawn. I visited Newport Fit for Life and personal trainer Phil Gephardt. He holds a Master of Science degree in exercise science and was a three-sport varsity MVP in high school. Phil is an expert due to his formal education and practical fitness background. I'm a personal trainer, health and fitness expert, strength coach. One patron at a time, this personal trainer imparts his wisdom and philosophy to all who come to him desiring results. Workouts and nutrition combine to become fitness. One without the other is incomplete. 
A lot of what we eat in America, um, one is sad and depressing, but can also make people feel sad. Health is when one has a proper balance in life. Each person needs their own personal assessment from a health expert before beginning even a moderate program. A certified trainer can still get your body and mind into the best shape by simply adapting your training program to your specific lifestyle and your goals. After an exhaustive workout and being educated about health and fitness, here at Newport Fit for Life in Irvine, reporting for Around and About Orange County News, I'm Jeff Sparks. Is Phil related to Jack LaLanne? For more health and fitness information, go to NewportFitForLife.com. A new season means new possibilities. No one knows this more than head coach of Cal State Fullerton softball program, Kelly Ford. Coach Ford made great improvements to the team last season, where they shocked the collegiate world by upsetting top-ranked teams like number two, Oklahoma, and number 10, UCLA. Ford had previously won four national championships as head coach at Mount San Antonio College. That's all for me. I will have more sports news ready for you all next time. Now I pass it back to Edwin and Jeanette. Thank you, Jeff. Well, that concludes today's show for Around and About Orange County News. Make sure to check out our sister show, Noticiero Latino del Condado de Orange. And don't forget to check us out on YouTube and Facebook, youtube.aaoc slash nlco.com, facebook.aaoc slash nlco.com. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.